Thank you, George. Happy New Year from NASA's Dryden Flight Research Facility on California's high desert. I'm Don Haley from the Dryden Public Affairs Office. One of the major highlights at Dryden this past year was the opening of this small teacher resource center. Since we're fairly distant from the TRCs at major NASA centers, it's given our local teachers easier access to NASA's educational programs and the wealth of materials available to them. Expanding again on the education theme, we had special displays and guest astronauts for students we invited from the five Southern California counties surrounding Dryden for the landing of the Space Shuttle Endeavor on its maiden flight last May. The thousands of students here saw for the first time a drag chute used by a Space Shuttle orbiter. Another highlight was the grand opening of the Integrated Test Facility. The ITF gives researchers the ability to operate and observe various aircraft systems simultaneously prior to a research flight. This unique capability speeds up and enhances systems integration and pre-flight checks on all types of research aircraft. And the ITF can be used by up to six aircraft at the same time. In the important area of high angle of attack research, Dryden this past year was involved with three aircraft flying these types of missions the F-18, the X-31, and the X-29. The F-18, with its three-axis thrust vectoring system for high AOA controllability, achieved 70 degrees in sustained flight in NASA's study of airflow characteristics, control surface interaction, and engine performance at these flight conditions. Researchers are also looking at the X-31 with its thrust vectoring system for greater maneuvering capability. The X-31 is being flown at Dryden by an international test organization, and it has also reached 70 degrees angle of attack in sustained flight. The program is managed by the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, DARPA, and could someday lead to fleets of high-performance fighters with thrust vectoring systems for better controllability at high angles of attack. This past year, Dryden participated in another flight project with the X-29 forward swept wing experimental aircraft, the third doing high AOA work at Dryden. The unique aircraft was modified with vortex flow controls at the nose in a study of using small gas thrusters for better controllability at high angles of attack. It was a very successful project which produced a lot of good research data in a very short time. The triple sonic SR-71 is now being used as a high-speed, high-altitude research platform, and data from these types of missions will be used in the development of future high-speed civil transport. Locally, Dryden families and students from nearby Lake Los Angeles schools, our adopt-a-school partners, were thrilled when one of our three blackbirds cruised overhead during Dryden's Family Day program. Just before the holidays, NASA's highly modified 990, now a landing systems research aircraft, got into the air for the first time in several years on a functional check flight in preparation for space shuttle landing gear systems tests to begin soon as part of NASA's ongoing effort to upgrade and improve systems on the orbiter. Discovery's last minute visit to Dryden on December 9th rounded out this year's space shuttle missions as it flew south over the western edge of the United States for a midday landing on the main runway at Edwards. And Dryden shuttle support crews will be eagerly awaiting the missions of 1993 to help land and service the orbiters when weather diverts them to Dryden. As the new year began, our aircraft crews were busy at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida, preparing Dryden's venerable B-52 to air launch a Pegasus space booster from the pylon on the right wing on a mission to place a Brazilian satellite into orbit. From Dryden, Happy New Year to everyone with NASA. And now we go to Don James at the Ames Research Center near San Francisco.